Chris Wait. Uh, greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another episode of Between Two Nerds, where we talk with prominent guests about all aspects of the networking industry, from protocols old and new, to industry trends and drivers, to up-and-coming technologies, <coughs> and as always, things you should know to further your career. And Jeff, glad to have you back. You've been uh, traveling the world over the last couple of months, it seems like. Yeah, I have. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Mark. Uh, I've been to Australia. ITF 119 was in Brisbane, and then I took a week off. Yeah. So great to be back. Great to see everyone. Yeah. The, the team is back together. Well, today we've got with us uh, an old friend of both Jeff's and I, uh, Mark Blanchet. Um, Mark and I uh, first got to know each other. Back at the turn of the century, I love saying back at the turn of the century, it makes it sound so old, but now it is actually starting to get old. But uh, we were both very involved in uh, the IPv6 transition uh, movement, I guess you yeah. want to call it, um, and uh, got to know each other quite well. Um, and uh, oh, I don't know where that technical difficulties thing came from, but, uh, uh, but anyway... Um, and then uh, Jeff and Mark, you guys know each other quite well from uh, from IETF. Yeah. And um, um, so, yeah, so so we are talking as the uh, as the uh, title said, IP in space packets packets on Mars. I guess I, you know, I like to have I, I should have a little echo re, uh, effect when I say packets on Mars. But uh, uh, but Mark, forty five uh, minutes. <laughs> RTT in forty five. Yeah. So um, so Mark, I guess you've got some uh, some slides you want to uh, mm -hmm. show us. Sure. Yeah. So uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, so the uh, the topic here is the Internet Protocol Suite. So. IP transport applications, you know the whole, and then network services, routing, you know everything, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, most of those topics um, uh, in deep space. And um, and if you want to read more about it, the uh, the draft uh, that describes, uh, you know, a bit of this uh, presentation is on the on the uh, slide. Yeah, and I, should, um, I should mention I um, uh, I meant to mention that in the introduction a, a couple of shows ago we had Tony Lee on talking about um, uh, mm -hmm. talking about uh, satellite architectures um, uh, and you know what he was really talking about is everything from low Earth, Earth orbit out to um, Lagrange points I guess and but you know the question this here is, is what what's that. This is the next step. Deeper this into is the deep next space. step. Yeah. What happens when yes. you get out to the moon and beyond, where where uh, speed of light starts becoming a factor? Mm -hmm. So anyway, want to throw that in? Yeah. Yeah. So well, uh, that's a good uh, segue towards uh, this uh, slide that says uh, this talk is not about internet in space for end users. Um, you know, when you start talking about IP in space and deep space, meaning uh, way uh, off uh, Earth, Moon and Mars and stuff, people start saying, you know, oh, okay, internet in space. Well, yeah, it won't work. <clears throat> okay, so maybe one day we will have internet traffic with space for end users, but that's not the current primary use case. Um, internet in space for you know the foreseeable future will be like a multi-enterprise uh, private network. Um, so uh, think about the fact that we don't need to modify internet and users software and devices. We only care about space application run on space agencies or organization servers and and clients and devices, right? So it, this is not internet in space. So. When, when I'll be talking about, you know, some applications, thinks that that's not about having all the end users on the internet using that application or that transport or that, you know, whatever <clears throat> protocol. This talk is not about Earth satellites, like as uh, 
Jeff was saying, uh, Earth orbits have a very different and actually easier properties. It's like uh, below one second, second delay, disruptions are well planned, uh, known, regular, short. This is not about that. We're talking about IP using the IP protocol suite of protocols and applications for deep space usage by specific space applications. <clears throat> so what's the difference? Uh, so deep space communications is more difficult. Um, you have m way longer delays. So uh, for example, Earth to Mars, uh, round trip time is depending on the actual planet uh, locations will be up to 45 minutes. So as you can understand, you won't do a browser and uh, ask for a web page and wait 45 minutes. Uh, we will have uh, interruptions of communication. So that problem is even in some ways more difficult. Um, there are known interruptions, for example, because of the orbital set, uh, dynamics, right? Um, you know, the orbiters uh, going uh, around the, uh, uh, for example, Mars uh, may not be uh, reachable by your rover because it's on the other side of Mars or it's on the other side of Mars and Earth is, is on the other side or there's a uh, sun in between, right? So there are all kinds of uh, situations that are mostly calculated and planned, uh, ex essentially always calculated and planned, but things happen that, <laughs> that are unplanned. And there are some random stuff, right? Uh, solar flays, uh, unexpected failures of radios, of anything, right? Uh, deep space communications is more difficult. Uh, interruptions may be quite long. For example, um, a few months ago, there were a two weeks conjunction, two weeks uh, time uh, duration of, uh, of uh, that happens a few every few years. And the sun was between Earth and Mars. So what happened is uh, NASA GPL actually uh, was essentially closing down any communication be uh, for two weeks between Earth and the rover, for example. They, they essentially shut down the ro rover and say, you know, see you in two weeks, right? <clears throat> um, uh, uh, Mars orbiters, for example, the, the three uh, different orbiters that are currently uh, uh, orbiting around Mars typically communicate with rovers uh, for 15 minutes every six hours. So that's gonna give you some rough numbers. So the interruption can be minutes, hours, days, weeks, right? So not the mm -hmm. typical internet. Other characteristics of deep space communications, one-way links, uh, asymmetric links and bandwidth, variable over time bandwidth, and this is not completely, you know, unknown or complicated, but it adds over the, the rest, right? We know how to deal with most of those, you know, on the current internet and before, but, um, you know, this is kind of a added over the delays and interruptions. <clears throat> uh, for example, radio locking uh, may be a variable time. Sometimes it takes more time because you know, you're on the horizon and the radio locking doesn't doesn't get it through. And so sometimes you plan for some uh, slot of communication, but that slot is actually less because, you know, because. <laughs> so, so uh, and uh, hardware. Uh, si uh, simplistic question here from on my part, but uh, by radio locking, you just mean uh, two radios syncing up together, locking, locking your signal. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. Okay. Layer zero. <laughs> yeah. La layer zero. But the point here is even if you plan stuff, it may not happen as you plan, right? So, right. <clears throat> so uh, and I'm referring to, uh, you know, uh, work that is in the ITF right now. It's called TVR, time variant uh, routing, where uh, there are uh, considerations of having contact plans or you know, you know, you will be talking to the other uh, device at that time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But reality is, it doesn't happen as you want, right? So, yeah. Um, same uh, deep space also is difficult because hardware is, uh, you know, it's more specific, is hardened, is uh, more costly, less performant than current of the shelf that we use on the internet. So you need to be careful about you know, rotting um, 
uh, LLM on on <laughs> on your device, <laughs> um, you may not be able to. Uh, this is actually changing because their space agencies are currently working to use more of the shelf uh, uh, hardware. Uh, so that enables them to really bring uh, costs down, but uh, that's another discussion. So the key point here is, can we use the, our internet protocol suite for deep space? Um, um, about 20-ish years ago, um, uh, an RFC that was uh, written by Vint Cerf and uh, colleagues from uh, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, essentially concludes, no, uh, you know, that's not possible. That tr triggers a lot of uh, discussion within the space agencies, I could say. And, uh, you know, and essentially transport uh, TCP at that time was is way too chatty for those kinds of delays and uh, disruptions, as well as, you know, mm -hmm. other protocols and applications. Um, so the consequence of this uh, conclusion was to invent a new networking stack from scratch called the bundle protocol, uh, which is essentially based on a store and forward design with its own new transport, routing, naming, security, neighbor discovery, application, API, network management, everything has to be reinvented from scratch, you know, yeah. all over. Um, but internet, internet and internet engineering has evolved since, uh, that, uh, you know, 20-ish years ago. We have IoT, we have a disruption of communications. Now we have IoTs that are you know, not communicating all the time uh, with uh, the internet. And when there's a link up, then well, they, they take the opportunity to talk and they go back to sleep or, you know, things like that. We also have new transport protocols uh, such as Quick. And uh, Quick is actually one of the key things that uh, for uh, this proposal or this uh, uh, project uh, was key for making it happen uh, on, in deep space. So we, uh, with a group of friends, we actually reassess the use of the internet protocol suite for deep space. And our, our short answer is yes, it works. <laughs> you may disagree. <laughs> so this is the subject of the presentation and you have the URLs of uh, references of, of our work. Mark, so, not surprisingly, yes. we're developing BGP over Quick, which is probably topic of one of the future shows. So it will be ready for you. <laughs> uh, yeah so um yeah quick quick is uh, not only useful for internet but also for deep space um so internet protocol um ip itself has no notion of time right there's only up count uh especially for v6 uh it you know what i'm going to describe is actually pretty standard and everybody knows on networking but it's actually relevant to our discussion. It's unreliable delivery of datagrams and it has an hierarchical addressing based on the topology, right? The device gets an IP address from the network it is attached to and that enables aggregation and routing, right? And, uh, you know, if you compare to bundle protocol, bundle protocol has permanent IDs for uh, devices. Therefore, they don't change uh, if the change in the topology of the network. Therefore, it almost impossible to do aggregation in routing. <clears throat> and, but IP, given that same reason, you need to, when the device move, change IP addresses, then you need to manage that at some layer, right? And we used to have mobile IP and now we're using it. We're doing it at either the application or the transport quick does that very nicely. But IP, when the destination is not in the forwarding table, what IP does is drops the packet and sends an ICMP error back to the source. We don't want this in deep space. Why? Because the orbiter with, uh, you know, on orbiting around Mars, you know, may be talking to the rover, get the, you know, some packets, and then he may not be able to forward the packets to the next up, right? For example, Earth or, you know, another orbiter or someone else. It needs to store the packets for a while. They are actually doing it right now, but not at the network layer, essentially layer one. It's a bucket of bits that they keep. 
um, until they can send it to the next uh, in the next up. So we need to change IP uh, stack the IP itself uh, so that routers would instead uh, need, uh, buffer or store the IP packets until the next up becomes uh, reachable again. So it's a queuing discipline buffer management that need to be added to an IP forwarding node. Uh, we actually did a prototype pretty straightforward. Uh, people that have <coughs> done those kind of things are uh, probably already have in their mind uh, how to do this. It's not a big deal. And it's the same problem. Either you use IP, you use bundled protocol, because bundled protocol is store and forward. So it, it says in the title, <laughs> you need to store the bundles. And uh, if you do layer one uh, forwarding, you need to store the bits until you're so this is kind of a very straight to uh, deep space, uh, you know, requirements. Mm -hmm. Until you have so many orbiters around everything <laughs> that you don't need that anymore. But yeah, you know, may take some decades decades to achieve that uh, that part. Um, we say we have TCP. Well, TCP three way handshake, TLS handshake, multiple RTT. So if you think about 45 minutes uh, RTT, that all won't work in space. And that's the reason why they rejected, one of the reasons why they rejected IP as a possible way of doing uh, for deep space. So, and even any protocol using IP will not work either. So this is kind of a, sorry, it doesn't work. UDP uh, works because no notion of time. Uh, typically, in typical UDP protocols, the whole request is one datagram, and the whole answer is back in one datagram. Not always, but typically. We already have a few uh, well-known application protocols over UDP, NTP, SNMP, DNS, media, NFS, boot P, uh, DHCP, TFTP. Uh, so those, if they are okay with time, in the sense that they don't have... Uh, you know, are, do not have a chatty uh, kind of uh, uh, protocol, and they just send a request and wait for getting the answer over UDP would work right away in deep space. So, and I'll show you this in a few minutes. UDP is also used for a new reliable transport because UDP is obviously not reliable. So the new reliable transport is quick and it runs over UDP. So QUIC provides reliable transport services and twin provides a notion of a connection, but different from TCP, you can see the connection as a, a pipe where you will have multiple, what they call streams. And one stream is actually equivalent of a TCP connection. So I can have, you know, thousands of streams or the equivalent of TCP connection with the same peer. And this will be in a single connection. So this is well suited for spacecraft because they may have multiple payloads and they have long live application with Earth. So you establish a connection with the spacecraft even before it quits Earth and you keep that connection you know, for a year, right? So you don't need to reestablish connection. You could if you want, but Quick enables you to do this. And then both peers can, can uh, uh, start streams for whatever application, HTTP, you know, media, whatever, right? So you have kind of a, a permanent state of connection between the two peers. Quick is mandatory, uh, secured as TLS built in. Uh, it's reliable, so it fixes reordering, uh, loss, duplication, all those things. Uh, if we talk about bundle protocol, bundle protocol doesn't provide any of these semantics. So an application over bundle protocol has to take care of reordering of bundles, loss of bundles, duplication of bundles, all those things that were used to be done by transport. For example, Quick is not in bundle protocol. Uh, Quick is also single in shake. So within one in shake, you establish the connection and the security TLS instead of multiple for TCP TLS. So this is again, very well suited for space because you don't want to wait for multiple RTT to get the connection up. If the peer is already known, uh, you can send the data. So known being you have uh, already established security association and there's a token shared between the two. 
you can send data on the initial connection establishment. It's called R zero RTT. Again, well suited for space because I can send you right away data, right? On the first packet. Um, it keeps the connection even when the client uh, change IP addresses and port because within quick, the connection is not bound to the IP address or port number. It has a kind of a, a large uh, ID, connection ID, which is not related to IP address and port. So if you change to a different IP address or port or on earth, if you are beyond a NAT and you NAT gives you a, another port, uh, outgoing port, uh, Quick will, will, will verify, the peer will verify with you, are you really the right one I know, given the security context, and then they continue the discussion, the connection. So really useful, again, for us, well-suited in space, because the spacecraft may have an IP address based on his link as he goes over the space, but when it lands on Mars, on Moon, he may have another IP address because of, of his attaching network uh, on Moon or Mars, and therefore having this uh, connection still up is very useful for space. Probably difference in uh, TCP or explain it in a few words is important, right? In TCP, socket is bound to an yes. IP address. You change the IP address, you need to close the session of a new one. Quick, exactly. unique identifier that allows you to keep notion of the session, but change the IP address. So this is exactly. Right. Yeah, so it's not only useful for internet, but it's very useful for deep space. And Quick was not designed for, you know, with deep space in mind. Um, Quick provides reliable transport services with in a user space. What that means is you don't, you don't need to change a kernel. So it's way easier to deploy today and can be updated easily. So it's really well suited for space. Even you can even have different quick stacks that can be used on the single node, right? An application can use a one quick stack and another application can use a different uh, quick stack. So that's not sure the use case, but uh, where I'm trying to show, you know, for example, for some missions or some payloads, they may want a different kind of, uh, uh, um, you know, configuration of quick, right? Um, HTTP is defined over Quick, so you can use reuse all HTTP frameworks we're using today, J JavaScript or anything, and we'll we'll go into application design in a few slides. But, um, it's way simpler to develop applications for space because right now the, the applications are all you know uh, special, uh, you know one-off, uh, cost the arm and leg, and uh, you know it's it's. You cannot, you're not reusing a lot. Uh, you can, ca Quick can carry over uh, other apps like media. You can even do tunneling, IP uh, over Quick, UDP over Quick, Ethernet over Quick, you know, name it. And this is in parallel or inside the same pipe I was describing. You know, you can have HTTP in that kind of connection. You can have, you know, tunneling, you can have media on the same connection. So, what do we do with Quick uh, in deep space? By default, Quick has short delays, right? The initial RTT that is a part of the estimation for uh, for a congestion control is a few uh, hundred milliseconds. So obviously with 45 minutes uh, RTT, uh, that won't work. Um, and it does congestion control. But if you set the various Quick parameters to appropriate bar loop, values, which is essentially typically large, and you simplify the congestion control, then Quick works just fine in space. Um, moreover, Quick uh, could uh, use proxies. So you can think of proxies which, has the, which are at the space edge where the uh, uh, Quick uh, connection uh, on Earth and on Mars surface are the typical one. And then on the, on the space edge, you have special proxies that do more work, right? For example, do more buffering, uh, do policies of uh, what should I, you know, send first and stuff like that. So it, it has the the architecture for uh, running proxies, which is actually also useful for deep space. Mark, so what with you, that, what we, you do with congestion control? Uh, do you completely set it off? Well, what's exactly almost, the same here? 
almost because if you think about congestion control on on internet right it, it's it's what it's it's making sure that the uh you know the buffers on uh, on routers do not you know go uh you know you don't want to have large queues right so you you back off because you're sending too much data right so you don't want to accumulate packets within the network right that's roughly what it is uh, the main goal is the fairness not the routers but yeah right. exactly but but when you think about it you will be buffering a lot of packets in space so you, you, it's actually buffer bloat on steroids <laughs> it's like yeah. it's not congestion control it's like it's by design you will be accumulating uh, packets in intermediate nodes so oh, have you congestion control or just switch stuff that's the question uh, we uh, the what we did was essentially only uh, keep the window size so making sure that the source is not sending too much based on the bandwidth uh, delay product you would limit the uh, the source to actually okay. send too much data but you would not use you could but right now we're not using any kind of a signaling like ecn or whatever or or uh, estimates of congestion based on packet loss or stuff because that's normal the packets will be kept for maybe hours in in some intermediate nodes right so so it's more of a flow control rather than congestion in other words exactly okay exactly so with the appropriate setting of the quick stack as we just discussed and no modification of protocol of the quick stack itself we were able to send an http request to voyager <laughs> That's it, um, obviously in the simulation. But uh, so what we simulated is twin, uh, 18 hours delay each way. So 36 hours RTT and you have the water shark uh, uh, screen uh, there. And as you could see, the first two packets are the establishment of the uh, connection. The last two are the connection close, which we did, but we don't need to. Uh, four and five are the get HTTP and response. And there's uh, additional uh, negotiate or packets that are exchanged, the, uh, um, the connection IDs, the new connection IDs that we haven't worked out on it. You know, it's not a, a big thing, but we may want, we may be able, it's not that useful in, in space, but so this is the current. So we were able to send a request and a response to Voyager using Quick. So full connection. So uh, moving up in the stack, HTTP, HTTP itself doesn't have any notion of time, right? So uh, there's only a few related, uh, time-related HTTP headers uh, that may be used, such as cache control and expires, uh, that uh, we use on, on the internet to, you know, to use caching, essentially. Uh, you can decide not to use those headers, they are not mandatory, or you set proper values, you know, large values. Uh, the server and the client, but uh, however, typically have timeouts. So you have to set the value proper, properly, right? For example, uh, curl, uh, to do uh, what I just described, you put curl with minus M, and then you put a big number, which is the timeout, and you're fine. Nginx uh, can be uh, configured with uh, large values for timeouts, and you're fine. Um, HTTP, uh, it's actually HTTPS, which is used over quick because TLS is done and mandatory at the quick layer. Um, so one can design a space application using HTTP, REST API, Java, JavaScript, or all those frameworks. You just need to be careful about the right design, which is you have to design, define as you should do today, completely asynchronous uh, uh, connections and communications, right? Uh, this is the, the best current practice today for internet and it's required for, you cannot do synchronous stuff uh, on, in deep space. Uh, you make sure that the local references are uh, with uh, things that are already cached or preloaded of all your assets. You set the timers uh, properly. And uh, the good thing, it's really, really easy to test. You just disconnect the computer from the internet and test if your application work. <laughs> If that works, you're probably pretty good. Uh, you could consider various uh, web optimization, uh, web assembly, HVAC, with, which would 
you know, decrease the use of uh, the bandwidth if you want, but that's, you know, optional. Um, media, uh, for example, you could have one way, uh, like streaming camera from Mars to Earth. You could have two way audio video conferencing, but you know, this is kind of a, not sure there will be a typical deep space, right? Uh, with moon, with a few, uh, uh, with ISS, it's no problem. Moon, you know, a few seconds delay should be okay. But, you know, having a video conferencing thing with something that is 40 minutes away from you may not work. But, or is, may not be the right uh, use case. But, uh, but we can carry uh, media over transport, for example, directly over UDP uh, streaming with RTSP. RTP, we can use over quick, uh, quick as a, uh, it's called mock the uh, working group working on uh, media over quick, or we can use media over HTTP as we do today on the end. We also have uh, another application protocol, which is called COAP. Co-op uh, co um, co is, was uh, created for IOTs and it's an kind of application protocol that has essentially the same semantics uh, as HTTP, but super optimized for resource constrained devices and links such as IoT or low bandwidth. So it runs on various IP transport protocol, including UDP. And there's a contribution right now for uh, configuring COPE, not changing anything about COPE uh, co-op, but actually uh, configuring it to be used for deep space. So that's another choice. So if we resume the uh, stack, this is what we can do on, on IP and deep space, which is on the layer two and below, you will have uh, CCSDS space link. CCSDS is the equivalent of the ITF, but for space uh, communications and protocols, it's the standard body. And they define the space links, the layer two and uh, below. You could have Wi-Fi or 3GPP as we discussed. For example, on moon surface or Mars surface, you would have IP, UDP, no, no TCP. Over UDP, you could have quick. Over, over quick, you could have apps. Over HTTP, or apps directly on quick or media. You can have Coke, uh, co-op. <laughs> over quick, over UDP, you can have NTP, SNMP, you know, all those things over the different layers. So there's a pretty large uh, set of uh, possibilities for deep space. Uh, I have a few slides left, uh, more for network services, and then I'm done. So, for example, network management, what tools do we have? We use SNMP with MIBS, this is kind of the old guy, NetConf with Yang models, and SSH. Let's go one after the other. SNMP runs over UDP, so a good candidate. Uh, there is no timeout in the protocol. The timeout is only set by the client. So let's try it. We use a net SNMP, the, the old uh, uh, software that we've been using. Uh, we just we put a delay of two hours because right now our test bed is uh, the real wall clock. So if, if you set a, a delay of uh, 18 hours, or you wait 18 hours or 36 hours to get the response. So it's kind of long. Uh, we're working on having, uh, you know, time warp to help uh, uh, do faster simulations. But so we do a uh, two way uh, or round trip type time of four hours. The SNMP get uh, of with a timeout a bit more than four hours, just got the response, just work. So network management, Nothing to reinvent here compared to bundle protocol. Just use a SNMP. If you want to use a NetConf, um, it's a newer, better management framework, but it runs on TCP or SSH, with, where SSH runs over TCP. So roughly, it's the same problem for us. Net, NetConf over Quick is being defined, but not yet standardized, so it's a good candidate. Or you can use RESTConf, which uh, is essentially a REST API over HTTP, and HTTP can run over quick. So you can get that, that one too. SSH, well, yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> SSH is very chatty. One character is multiple RTT. 
uh, can be optimized with local eco and line mode, but still it's very chatty. Um, so right now we don't have a good solution. There's a SSH3 proposal, a new protocol uh, over HTTPS quick that might be a good candidate, but question is, do we really need SSH? Do we really want to send char by char over 40 minutes delays? That's a question. Um, DNS. Um, uh, so you don't, uh, so re DNS used UDP, so okay. But you don't want to resolve a name through a deep space link of 45 minutes, right? Doesn't make any sense. So if you do appropriate pre-caching and, you know, proper deployment techniques so that the name resolution and the security, uh, uh, therefore DNS sec verification is local to the planetary body or local to your environment, then DNS just work fine. Uh, no need for protocol changes. It's more a matter of how you deploy the infrastructure the right way. The only thing is you need to be careful about lifetimes. You don't put the RRs uh, lifetimes for uh, 50 seconds or so because they will be uh, gone before you, <laughs> you talk. Um, naming hierarchy, do you use a special TLD or under your domain or all those kind of configurations? Uh, considerations are important because they will impact the way you will deploy, but any any naming hierarchy would work. It's just it, the way you will design it will have an impact on how you deploy it. So I don't want to enter the discussion of do we need the TLD for Mars or the for the solar system? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Probably if um, you send hot file one chair at a time, it would still work. <laughs> <laughs> um, time distribution, NTP works over UDP, uh, but NTP is actually a very complex machinery to you know compensate network conditions uh, to set times, right? It's, you know, it's a whole thing, right? Uh, you were talking about IPv6, um, uh, Jeff, uh, we we actually ported the first version of NTP uh, software uh, to IPv6, and uh, was like in the early 2000s. It was like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so we never touched anything about the mechanics. Uh, we just, you know, changed the ID of the the, the peer. Anyway. Um, and NTP experts were consultant and they consulted and they were pretty sure that NP would work with long delays. So expect except that the notorious precision were may not be as good. Okay, let's put it in test. NTP D server uh, serving its own time, NTP date on client, delay of two hours each way. Uh, we set the uh, art artificial uh, system date of the client to be uh, really something outside of the RTT. So making sure that, you know, there's no kind of cross uh, uh, change. Uh, you know, we actually put 10 hours behind, which is pretty bad plug drift. And uh, we did NTP date with the timer, uh, a timeout, which is larger than the, NT the uh, RTT. And it just worked. The accuracy the first time was 30 seconds. We try again. The second time, the accuracy was two seconds. So, you know, which is pretty good over uh, two hours, uh, uh, one way delay. So looks like 10 NTP would, would work in space. Yeah, it's, and it seems like NTP, I mean, especially NTP is obviously always important, but uh, especially at those kinds of distances and those kinds of delays, it seems like NTP would be, uh, you know, even more important than it is you know, with terrestrial internet. Yeah. Is yeah. that well, it's time, fair? Time is obviously very important in space, right? And right yeah. now, they're essentially what they do is they calculate the time, the pro propagation time of uh, from Earth to, uh, to the, uh, I don't know, say the rover, and then they send the data, you know, like uh, plain text, like in a command, and mm -hmm. then they send it and then, so they, they hope that it will arrive at the time they calculated to set the clock, right? But that's yeah. the, the time distribution at the moment. So NTP will improve this a lot. <laughs> um, routing, um, we haven't worked on, and I know you guys are 
two rotting guys. So, yeah. you know, here's a call for helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you could see two cases of rotting, uh, celestial body, Vicente, so orbit and ground. So this is like the Earth, Internet and LEO. So we already know how to do this. Uh, the only thing about rotting is, um, in my book, is about the deep space links. Do we need more than static? Static may be just enough. Or do we need something else and what it is? Uh, it hasn't been, you know, uh, worked on a lot. Um, do we need really time-variant rotting? Maybe, maybe not. So this is like uh, work to do. Final slide. So if I try to summarize everything, what I said is that by temporarily storing IP packets in forwarding nodes until links are back up because of the orbital stuff, setting appropriate quick parameters, you can properly design applications and by properly design application to be asynchronous and have large timers, you get the whole internet protocol suite that can be used end to end in deep space. What that gives you is uh, decrease costs, decrease risk. Uh, you know, you, uh, your company, uh, my friends, can, can create uh, devices for a space. No big deal, no big problem. It increased security because we will be using security and algorithm protocols implementations that have been tested over and over and verified on Earth which is currently not the case for space, uh, for example, the bundle protocol security, which hasn't been you know, tested and verified as, as we have for TLS, for example. And you, know, you would be able to, our, you know, anyone who is uh, you know, developing internet applications to actually you know, develop space applications, you just only need to tell them a few things and they will be okay. Um, we demonstrated a few results from simulations in our test bed, and uh, up to now it's been confirmed that the space IP is working pretty well. Obviously more work uh, needs to be done, and here are the uh, URLs of the information for if you're more interested. I'm done. Uh, on, the, on the IETF uh, deep space mailing list, I, I think you said it earlier, and... Uh, I don't remember, but there, there's an actual deep space working group for the IETF, right? N not at the moment. Um, oh, okay. This is being this is being this is being discussed uh, internally with the IDs, um, and uh, we may have something, uh, you know, some news by next IETF in Vancouver, either in form of of a buff or you know whatever it's it's in discussion okay. right now it's just okay. a, a mailing list uh, you know i definitely informal uh, i would definitely like to get signed up for that mailing list i might do that right after this show mark yes let, let me have a couple of questions how much do you care about uh amount of bits on the wire and what are your bandwidth constraints um, good questions. Um, the main problem is really the bandwidth delay uh, product, right? Um, obviously, you know, depending on uh, which device, which, com you know, th there's a large range of bandwidth. For example, if you talk uh, to Voyager, uh, this is like in bits per seconds, right? <laughs> Um, so, and, and it variable because, uh, depending on, on the frequencies and, you know, the one from typically the, you have a smaller bandwidth going forward, which is up to the spacecraft and the downlink to Earth is larger because you want to send typical, uh, is you sending telemetry data, images, uh, sensors, data, stuff like that. So, so, uh, but it ranges a lot. Um, up to now, we've been kind of a, you know, a few megabit per second thing. Um, this is currently changing, as you may be aware, because we're using lasers now in, in deep space. They're uh, Goddard as, as uh, 
has uh, started some some work on this. There's a, a, um, a device a spacecraft going uh, further uh, that has uh, successfully done uh, lasers. Lasers are more kind of difficult because you need you don't need uh, you should not have any kind of cloud on Earth, so you need to uh, use uh, you know the right places which have almost no cloud uh, for the whole year. And uh, uh, the locking is even more difficult because you know they need to be way more aligned. Um, but the lasers will give you uh, you know hundred of megabit uh, megabit per second uh, bandwidth, right? So and they're kind of pushing the limit. So the bandwidth uh, is very variable depending on on the actual mission and and the overall uh, um, you know setup. Um, right now. Uh, we that's the good thing of doing networking in space is right now everything is kind of a dedicated. You have a dedicated frequency for a mission, another frequency for another mission, and, and then it's all kind of dedicated, somewhat dedicated. Uh, they may be shared. For example, for Mars, what they do is they have kind of a portal where they put all the, it's like a broker, uh, the 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 relay will tell you know i can i can uh, you know uh, send uh, uh, that number of uh, minutes over that uh, bandwidth therefore this is like the, the total number of bits that i can send from me to uh, to the rover and then the rover uh, this is something uh, has been described by the, the key people at the uh, jet propulsion library laboratory, the rover mission guys will actually uh, kind of uh, calculate what they could send, you know, <laughs> for that budget. <laughs> and that's really the bandwidth delay, you know, uh, budget. And uh, doing networking, then then it will make all this much more simpler. So but, practically uh, what you're saying, there's no need for low level optimization. Like uh, it's a point-to-point -point link, so practically I don't really need yes. mass address. I can re reduce amount of bits I'm sending. So we, we are not there. We, there's enough bandwidth to use like headers as is. Yeah, yeah, it's all point-to-point -point links. This deep space links are all point-to-point -point links. There's no, there's no broadcast uh, links or there's no multicast there. So it's, you know, point-to-point -point links. Uh, one more question. So for IoT space, as you mentioned, we've deployed some protocols such as MQTT that allow you like partial connectivity or uh, like transaction-based connectivity based on actually whether you are connected to something or not. Uh, so uh, have we looked into this space to learn but the IT device might go offline at 12 per hour. So it might wake up once in 24 hours, which is similar to what you're trying to do in a way. Exactly. Yeah, it's very similar to IoTs uh, at the moment. You know, the disruption kind of uh, uh, behavior, it's very similar. And it's there um, up to now, the in space agencies, they've been super planning everything for communications, right? As I described, I, you know, a mission, you know, I can send, you know, the science uh, people, the professor at the university who has a, some device on, on uh, as the payload of a rover, will have you know, the time slot, right? Three o'clock in the morning, three uh, zero five in the morning to three uh, sixteen in the morning. That's the time you can send data, and that's you, you'll you'll reach the rover. And you'll get back that that's it that's that's your budget the next time is you know somewhere else it's <laughs> um, like in you... our young days you would get time slot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so what happens is if you lose that time slot that time slot is completely uh you know lost right nobody else could use it so this is how they do communications at the moment. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's actually, you know, very good engineering. But what I'm saying is, is we, when we will be, and, and there is no alternative path. So as soon as you have alternative paths, path, then, then, you know, and have a networking stack, then you can start using the whole, you know, all the bandwidth that you can, uh, you know, you can get, right? So 
that's a really, uh, you know, will be a really game changer for communications. Really exciting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, you know, I guess for me, just stating the blatantly obvious, you were talking a lot about uh, IoT, and you know that that you know when we are talking about uh, communicating with Mars or the Moon or whatever that. Uh, you know the the experience we already have with IoT and and uh, um, and that area for sensors and control and all of that is going to become essential. It's going to be a, a huge amount of of uh, the traffic that is sent back and forth. You know, and uh, so how much of the experience that we're already gaining with IoT, you know, everything from uh, as silly as you know, refrigerator sensors to, you know, to legitimate, uh, you know, control and sensor data in, you know, industry and agriculture and all of that. How, how much of that is applicable to um, to the kind of sensors uh, and controls that we need in space? Um, well, you could think of a spacecraft as a, as a, as a bus uh, with uh, multiple uh, IOTs in it, right? Uh, I mean, because in space, you're limited in memory, you're limited in power, you're limited in uh, CPU, you're limited in bandwidth. So what I just said, you could apply 100% with IOTs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So, so it's the same thing. Um, I'm not sure the community... Uh, Talk, both community uh, talk a lot to each other, but uh, uh, we definitely uh, uh, should, uh, you know, work together <laughs> because it's uh, very similar problems. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, about the uh, I th I think um, I don't know uh, Jeff, you and I talked to. Uh, I can't remember if it was after the show started. I think it was right before the show started uh, about uh, uh, talking about um, having a future show on BGP over quick. Um, yes, uh, it's coming. And, uh, it's coming. Okay, you've got got thoughts there. Cool. I uh, wanted to bring it up just for everybody that's watching. That uh, you know, this is this is a great topic to um, to uh, uh, to cover. Um, you know, my own opinion, you know, I, I know, Mark, you showed, you know, a list of pretty much the common routing protocols that you see, but it seems like BGP is always the default protocol for something new. You know, it's just kind of the old reliable pickup truck that still works. <laughs> or a kitchen uh, sink, if you wish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can just kind of dump whatever on it. So, uh, so anyway, I, uh, that is all the comments or questions I can think of. Jeff, you have more? Uh, no, I have no questions, but it's really exciting topic. And I think we would love to see oh, yeah. Mark coming back sometime. Uh, things progressing. There's significant push from agencies, I you know, to further develop it. And, you know, it should be IP. We already have the technology to do it. We just yeah. need to figure out uh, application semantics, how to deal with, like, different, Constraints. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's so much of of uh, so much of this, you know, just looking at quick versus uh, TCP. I mean, you know, that goes all the way back to networking 101 and the OSI models and TCP models yeah. of why design redesign the whole thing when you can just unplug one protocol and plug another one in. Um, and yeah, and, quick quick is really a, a Swiss a Swiss Swiss knife. You yeah, know, it's. It's been, you know, it's agile. You can, you know, uh, you know, add or modify congestion control algorithms. Uh, you can set a lot of parameters to it. And it's, it's since it's user space, it could be your own application. And, you know, uh, and, you know, Facebook can, can have his own, you know, quick stack for his own application. And then, you know, you know what whoever else uh, google or uh, so it, it's really agile and and as you you have seen even if it was not designed for deep space in mind at all it's actually as many features that are key for deep space so it's like <laughs> yeah 
in round US we have a famous statement by Tony P. BGP is Swiss knife without a handle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, Mark, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us today. This has been one of my favorite episodes. I'm just fascinated by the whole topic. And, and uh, cool. you know, I, as Jeff said, we would love to have you back. Um, and, and, um, and, you know, either to get updates on what's going on or to pursue this further, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, this is just a fun topic to talk about. Thank um, you, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Much appreciated you coming, talking to us. Uh, thanks, Mark. Sure. Thanks and, for inviting me. Yeah. And thanks See everybody you. for joining us and, and taking your time to watch the show. We'll see you, uh, in two weeks.